Let's open our Bibles up to James chapter 4. Let's look together at verses 7 through 10. James chapter 4 and verses 7 through 10. In these few verses, James is going to speak to both those who are Christians and those who are, are not yet members of the body of Christ to encourage us in living the way that God wants us to, to put away worldliness and to come to Him. And if we've never obeyed the gospel, to really think about our situation, where we stand without Christ. And so he begins with these, these bullet points that he, he gives to us. Notice verse 7. He says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. That's what our Lord wants us to do. To submit unto Him. God has given us a will. And we can be willful if we desire and go in the way that we will. But what we need to understand is that it is only by submitting ourselves to the will of God that it will lead us to heaven's shore. And so he tells us, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I imagine many people don't realize they have that kind of power to put the devil on the run. And yet the Bible tells us that if we will resist him, he will flee from us. Now that doesn't mean that he's going to leave us alone forever. He didn't with Jesus. Jesus resisted temptation in Luke chapter 4. And in verse 13, the Bible says, the devil departed for a season, for a while. And we can put the devil on the run as well. And really, the two just go together. If you are submitting under the will of God, then you are resisting the devil. If we are not submitting to God's will, then we're not resisting the temptations of the devil. In verse 8, he says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. What wonderful blessings there are in drawing nigh to God. I know that... We are a people, we, we like to get close to others. Famous people, we, we want to get a selfie or, or something, you know, so we, we want to get close. How much better is it that we get close to God? There is safety, there is, there is joy, there is strength, and more than anything, the promise is if we will draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh unto us. Then he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James, a few different times already, has talked about this idea of, of being double-minded. It's a temptation that we always face to try to be of the world, to fit in with our world and try to serve God at the same time. James lets us know that that won't work. That double-minded man, he says in chapter 1, he's in, unstable in all his ways. And so, stop trying to live in two worlds. You need to draw nigh to God. Serve Him. Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts, he's going to say. He says in verse 9, Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Here, I think, is a, a, especially a message for those who are not yet Christians. Take a few moments. Think about where is the life that you're living right now leading you? And if it's not leading us to heaven, it ought to bring us sorrow. It ought to cause us to mourn, to feel a, a heaviness instead of joy until we take care of this matter. Remember, Jesus said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. They realize, those that realize, I have sinned and my sin is first and foremost against God. My sin put Jesus on the cross. So thankful for His sacrifice. And I want my sorrow to be able to be joy. So I will come to Christ. 
and I will put him on. And then in verse 10, he says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Remember, in the kingdom, the way to greatness is not by exalting yourself. But Jesus would teach his apostles, teach all his followers, that the way to greatness is in his kingdom is, is by being a servant. Being a humble servant in the kingdom of God knowing He will lift us up. My friend, there's not a greater award or reward than that which will be given to the Christian when this life is over. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Submit to His will. Walk in His ways. Obey Him, and He will lift you up. So Christians, we're encouraged Let's make sure we're not trying to live in two worlds. Let's not allow our allegiance to be divided. We will serve God, drawing nigh to Him, knowing He will draw near unto us. And if we're not yet Christians, we think about where our life is leading us. And we know that we need to make a change. I need to put on Christ so that I can have the forgiveness of my sins, the hope, of eternal life. He talked about cleansing your hands and, and purifying your, your minds. Well, we purify our souls in obeying the truth. 1 Peter 1, verse 22. And tonight, if you're here and you're not yet a Christian, we want to encourage you to take that step and to put on Christ in baptism for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you're subject in any way to the invitation of Christ, we hope you'll let that be known now as together we sing this good song. Let's stand.